and you'll need to make me co-host Sarah as well. I will do, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I believe we are now live streaming on YouTube. Over to you, Chair. We are now live. Please do not swear. Right. Okay. Uh, good evening and welcome to the extraordinary virtual meeting of the Overview Committee on the 25th of November 2021. I would like to welcome viewers of our live stream on YouTube. I am your chair for the meeting, Councillor Vicky Johns. Could I remind everyone that due to concerns relating to COVID risk, our council has delegated much of its decision making to senior officers for the period to the 17th of January 2022. Consequently, this evening will be a consultative meeting only. However, we will work as close as possible to normal procedural rules as detailed in our constitution. Where our meeting would normally have decided a matter, it will now make recommendations to a senior officer. That officer will then take our recommendation into account when making their decision. May I remind colleagues that the code of conduct applies throughout this meeting and we reserve the right to disconnect any disruptive participant. If there is a break in the internet connection or a power cut, please bear with us as we try to reconnect. Should we not be successful within 15 minutes, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. As this is a large meeting, it's particularly important to ensure microphones are muted when not in use to avoid disturbance from background noise. If you wish to speak, raise your yellow electronic hand and wait to be called. Please keep points short and do not interrupt while others are speaking. And please do not reiterate the previous 17 points if it's exactly the same. Our agenda is available online at www.eastdevon.gov.uk. Okay, we will now start the meeting by doing a roll call of all members here present. Can you please now unmute your microphone and when you hear your name, please confirm by saying present. When you have confirmed your present, please mute your microphone again. <clears throat> I can pass over to Wendy, please. Thank you. I'll start with you, Chair. Councillor Johns. I'm present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Vice Chair, Councillor Bonetta. Present, thank you. Councillor Barrow. Councillor Gazard. Present. Councillor Ingham. Present. Councillor Manley. Councillor Miller. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moulding. Present. Thank you. Councillor Ranger. And Councillor Woodward. Present, thank you. Thank you, Wendy, back to you, Chair. Sorry. Councillor Ranger informed me she may be a little bit late to the meeting due to an um, unfortunate appointment she has. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Um, I can confirm that the meeting is court. Uh, agenda item one, public speaking. Uh, there are no members of the public wishing to speak tonight, but a former East Devon District Councillor and current honorary alderman, Pete, Peter Burrows, has emailed with a statement which he would like read out to the meeting in relation to the item on public toilets. Wendy, are you happy to read that statement, please? Yes, I am. Um, so this statement is from honorary alderman Peter Burrows. As I have been involved in getting the carnival events back up and running, I had taken less, in, less of an interest in council events. However, I picked up on the review in late September as I was involved with the previous one many years ago, and this has now encouraged me back onto Seaton Town Council. The paper mentions a coordinated campaign in getting people to respond to the questionnaire when the results are not to the liking of those initiating the consultation in the first place. To get as much response is the cornerstone of any democracy. The consultation was itself loaded to make people support the premise of the categorisation made by the officers before answering questions about the toilets themselves. I myself had to go through it five times before putting the answers in, so it is disingenuous of the officers complaining of coordinated campaigns when they do not like the answers they were expecting. If when I personally went on Facebook to encourage people to respond to the consultation less than a week before the closing date of the coordinated campaign, I feel the officers underestimate the feeling of the residents of Seaton. 
as a proper campaign done seven weeks earlier would have got an even more representative view of their opinions. Relating to the underfleet toilets, in clear view, the officers say that they can use the facilities at Tesco's as it was a planning condition. There was a planning condition that two zebra crossings be built on Harbour Road and there is only one. To access the toilets, which are not displayed, you must go into the front entrance 100 metres further away from the underfleet ones, then pass through the payout tills, walk right along the store into the Costa area to find them. Another 80 metre journey. Before COVID, before COVID, this was bad enough, but wearing masks and negotiating young people in Costa is not something elderly people getting off the coaches want to do. The underfleet toilets are very well used with d disabled access when about, uh, sorry, let me start that again. The underfleet toilets are very well used with disabled access when events are held in Thurlow Harcourt Place. In fact, Saturday is a perfect example with the late night shopping, Christmas lights switch on and Christmas carnival, which I have organized with my carnival committee. The, re the parade starts there and with the desire of people to be entertained outside, there will be hundreds there and they would not like to trek to the seafront if caught short. Sadly, the public toilet review contained many flaws and a perfect example was the Chine toilets. Their closure was sold to the people of Seaton as upgrade of the premises with the access to the toilets all year. Yes, the Hideaway Cafe does look nice, but as you can expect, it is not open all the time. There has never been a sign that explains that the toilets within are available to coastal walkers, etc. In fact, those walking along the coastal path see the back of the cafe and the closed toilets. I walk past here most mornings and I can hear from many people that they cannot use the cafe toilets unless you are a customer, not what councillors were told at the time. Please make sure that underfleet toilets are not closed because Seaton will not gain coach friendly status, which is so needed for the local community and visitors alike. End of statement. Thank you, Wendy. OK, I don't think we've got any members of the public wishing to speak this evening. Nobody's registered with you, have they, Wendy? No. Thank you. OK, agenda item two, the apologies. Um, I believe we received apologies from Councillor Marcus Hartnell uh, and Councillor Jeff Pook. Is there another one? And Councillor Ian Hall. That's the one. Stuart Hughes, Chair. Stuart Hughes. Phil Twist speaking. Stuart Hughes. He's not on overview. No, he's um, apologised. He's going to speak actually for Sidmouth. Councillor um, Manley is trying to get in but can't get into the meeting. Okay, don't. Thank you. Wendy, I think now's probably the ideal opportunity to check to see whether or not any of the members that have tried to get in, I think we had a couple, see whether or not they've arrived. Yeah, uh, there's no one in the waiting room, so whether she um, um, is, hasn't got the code, what I... Um, Sarah, I've just, you... I've just sent her the code to be sure she's Lovely. got one. Thank you. I think Councillor Val Ranger could possibly be here. I can see her on my, well, not see her, but I can see her name on my screen. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't oh. see Councillor Dean Barrow. Uh, Councillor Manley is just arriving. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Okie doke. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? If during the meeting you wish to make a declaration, please remember to say which agenda item it refers to, then state your declaration and if it is a personal or prejudicial declaration and what exactly the interest is. Now I imagine there's going to be a lot of hands suddenly popping up from East Devon District Councillors about their own toilets. So if we can have those ones quickly, please. So we've got committee <coughs> members. Um, we have 
Jake Bonetta, Councillor Bonetta. Yes, thank you. Uh, personal <coughs> interest uh, as both an East Devon District Councillor for Honiton St Michael's and a Honiton Town Councillor for Honiton St Michael's uh, with the upcoming agenda item on public talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Ranger. Uh, just to say I'm a, um, a, a paid up member. Oh, <coughs> we've lost you, Val. Oh. I'm a member of the Sidmouth Gig Club, which would use the toilet. Gig Club. Thank you. Thank I think you. Val is probably trying to say the toilets at Port Royal, I expect. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Woodward. So it caught me by surprise there. I was waiting for W to come up. Um, yeah, uh, as an Exmouth town councillor, clearly I have a particular interest in the Exmouth toilets. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gazard. Yes, Chair. Um, I'm an Exmouth town councillor. And uh, yes, obviously, I've got an interest in, uh, in the Exmouth toilets. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Miller. Sorry for that. Um, yes, I'm, I'm a director of uh, Sideshore Community Interest Company, and we are um, working with East Devon District Council on establishing as a uh, of building some public toilets and we're in the process of, of doing that so that's an interest i don't know whether it's personal or official um okay I, I so sorry sorry henry i would say it was personal thank you we uh chair we've still got two hands raised non-committee members councillor mike allen and councillor twist I think Councillor Mike Allen's was up before the question. Yes, I'm just waiting until I'm asked to speak to the motion. Thanks. So I'm not sure. Obvious, obviously, as an East Devon councillor for St Michael's Ward, I have an interest in the Honiton decision. Councillor Twist. Thank you very much, Chair. Very similar um, personal interest member for Honiton St Michael's. I'd like to speak uh, at <clears> the <throat> opportunity particularly with reference to the King Street Blues in Hollison. Thank you. That isn't a declaration of interest. Thank you. I'll declare a personal interest because I use the facilities at East Devon. I thought I might as well throw my hat ring as well then. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, oh, Dawn Manley, Councillor Manley. Hello. Yeah, should, should I declare a personal interest as a member for Sidmouth Town and District? Personal use of. Thank you, Sidmouth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can see so Councillor Helen Parr's hand up, but yes. I would assume yeah. it's the same as everybody else is that you're the. Yes, for exactly. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Okay, back to you, Chair. Thank you. I would imagine that we all have a personal interest at some point or another that we've gone in and used the facilities. Okay. Okie dokies. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think you need to declare as a user of the facility. No, right? <laughs> just being open and transparent. No, there, I Henry, appreciate just... that. If everybody did that, we'd be here all night. Uh, okay. Agenda item four, public toilets review. So, just to remind members that this item was deferred from the overview committee last week, dated the 18th of November, in order to allow more time for councillors and members of the public to read through the report and the associated papers and to better inform the debate. This is a report from the service lead for street scene, Andrew Hancock, following a debate at Cabinet in May, which recommended reviewing our public toilets provision across the district. The report sets out some of the headlines from the public consultation following the review, issues raised and considerations to address some of the concerns raised, along with an equalities impact assessment. I'd like to invite Andrew to address his report now, please. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you, Chair. I shall just share my screen. Thank sure you. Everyone can see that. Can everyone see that? Mm. Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, Chair, can I just ask as we go through, um, if you've got any queries as I go, feel free for you to interrupt me because obviously there's no feedback virtually like this and I now can't see everyone's faces. So I've got yep. a short presentation. Um, I hope to keep it around 10 minutes. I'll do my best. Uh, highlighting the key themes from the consultation responses and setting out what the report's suggesting based on the feedback from the 1,267 responses we had, which is a fantastic rate and I think shows the strength of feeling about this topic. And I'll be happy to take questions at the end or go into any areas in more detail as, as required, of course. So I'm just going to outline some key statistics. So first of all, the ask for overviews, as you've just touched on, Chair, is to consider the consultation responses and the EIA linked under background papers and to assess the proposed categorization of the public toilet stock. Please consider the proposals outlined in section four and crucially the mitigations we've considered to address concerns expressed throughout the consultation and discussed through the equalities impact assessment, some of which I'll touch on in a moment. We'll then be asking cabinet um, to approve the categorization as set out in section four, taking into account the consultation results, the EIA and mitigations uh, such as lease conditions, which will continue a, a form of public toilet access where we dispose of sites in, in a lease hold way. And so your views as overview uh, will be really important in helping them decide if we've met our public sector equalities duty in considering this difficult decision and how to take it forwards. The decision is based on our recommendation that East Devon unfortunately can no longer afford to provide all the sites it did previously and our need to invest in retained sites and look to others such as community groups, businesses and other tiers of local government to help provide toilet access where we're proposing we can no longer afford to do so. It's not a suggestion that we don't appreciate how important access to this service is for all users or that any reduction won't be impactful. If we can't make this saving towards our £700,000 and growing medium term financial plan deficit, it will stack up issues and cuts for other areas where a service may have to cease entirely in order to help meet the budget deficit. As outlined in the report, a saving of 204,000 is proposed against the categorization of toilets rising to 404 if paid access were implemented, which cabinet will need to decide upon. The background to the report quickly is that in our first report in May, cabinet approved the guiding principles such as proximity and that these be used as a basis for the review, along with the principle that East Devon would focus on provision at Cat A sites where opportunities for alternative uses um, are sought at category B sites and CAT Cs are offered to town and parish councils or community groups. Following this, we undertook a detailed public consultation which ran for two months in August and September. It was available online, uh, paper copies and advertised extensively on our website and through social media and promoted in press releases. The report on the agenda today considers the results from that. Uh, as I said, we almost had 1300 responses including from equalities groups and 15 of our town and parish council councils, mainly those where the review may potentially affect them. The reason we need to consider this, this review is that this piece of work has, has been on the list um, for, for many years and we haven't invested in our stock since 2014 as the review has been avoided as long as possible. But it's now overdue, the investment is needed in the stock and we have a large budget deficit, so we need to make some savings from somewhere to address this. So I'll run through some key statistics and findings from the report. Most respondents, as you'd expect, wanted us to continue providing what we do now, um, but there were no actionable ideas alongside this as, how, as to how we might reduce costs or make the investment needed in the aging buildings. But we expected this type of response, obviously, as it is a very emotive subject and it is an important service. Many of the responses commented on how the proposed changes would impact those with protected characteristics, such as age and disability. For example, the most disputed um, guiding principle was proximity, where it was felt an eight minute walk was too far and those with mobility issues would not be able to get there. Respondents suggested instead that it should be halved. In the mitigation section of the report, we've discussed how in most cases, the toilets are available in the shorter four minute distance the speed of walking takes the lower end of the British average at three miles an hour. And if we carefully consider alternative uses at, cafe, at category B sites, such as cafes or community spaces, then we can reduce the impact of the pro proposals still further. 
So overall, almost 60% of respondents agreed with the guiding principles, and we felt this could be taken as a broad understanding or acceptance of the rationale for the review. And over a third agreed with the categorization of every single site, the A, Bs and Cs. And this was felt to be very high given what we were discussing and the potential closure of some sites and an acceptance from that third of what we're proposing and the rationale, the logic behind it. 56% of people agreed to paid access, but we believe from the responses this was predicated on a misunderstanding that that would protect provision at all the sites that we have now, which is not what we're suggesting on affordability grounds. Of the, the, um, those respondents, 71% would pay 30p, and surprisingly, almost 20% would pay as much as 50p. And there was strong support for a discount card, means tested, uh, and for those with disability access issues. So moving on, 40% um, of respondents agreed that there were opportunities for alternative uses and the suggestions that came forward tied with what officers thought for the sites, which led us to believe that that could be a viable alternative for providing some form of toilet access, um, marketing things such that we seek community or local business uses. Some of the suggested uses included a community bike hub uh, with cafe and toilets, a community eco hub, an information center and a cafe with public toilets. 57% of town and parish councils agreed with the guiding principles uh, and many made comments that, uh, that they understood East Devon's need to review, but they still wanted us to find a way to continue provision as it is. 62% of town and parishes disagreed with categorizations, but this related to suggestions for their own areas, as you would expect. The public response to the categorizations varied. Um, there was a range of uh, disagreements which we took into consideration, and these are set out at 2.10 and 2.11 in the report. We've used a cutoff point of 50% disagreement at a particular site from those responding from that area as a point, point to consider the objections in more de detail. And these are discussed at 4.8 and 4.9 of the report. So I need to touch quickly on the imperatives for this review, which are set out at section three of the report. In considering all the information from the consultation and while compiling our EIA, we thought very carefully about the impact on our communities and those with protected characteristics. In an ideal world, we wouldn't be bringing this forward and we would have the budget to continue provision at all sites, to make the investment that's needed in our public toilets and to improve the buildings and the design of the facilities, such to include accessible features, better baby changing, uh, adult changing places and address gender equality through the ratio of toilets. The difficult reality is we don't believe we have that luxury. The whole public toilet review has been designed to set out a logic to provision which sought to safeguard a level of access while minimising the impact of reduction as far as possible. So we understand that um, no mitigation can completely offset the impact and we, we accept the strong sense of feeling about public toilet provision that's been expressed in, in the statement at the start and, and lots of um, comments we've had since the closing of the consultation. And these mitigations have been set out to try and give balance and lessen the impact on our communities and those with protected characteristics. More detail, detail on these is within the Equalities Impact Assessment and Section 4 of the report, but to briefly summarise, the review as proposed would allow us to invest in what we retain, and I've mentioned already our intent is to improve baby change facilities, uh, the addition of at least two adult changing places to improve equality for people with severe disability, uh, and improve gender equality through potty parity ratios of facilities provided, um, two to one in favour of women where space allows. Marketing and evaluation of CAP BNC sites would focus on careful selection of alternative uses, prioritizing community or local businesses um, with retained toilet provision. And we've suggested in the report uh, controls or lease provisions to ensure that that access is for non-customers and as accessible standard where possible and with exterior access doors where the, the layout of the building allows. We suggested that if we do go for paid access, that a disability discount card and access cards available at some outlets, TICs for example, are provided so that those without contactless payment methods can still use the facilities. 
and section four of the report sets out the conclusion and also discusses the possible use of the transformation reserve and other mitigation for up to a year to continue the provision of cat b and c toilets whilst discussions and transfers are completed and overview are asked please to provide views on this to cabinet as well so in conclusion we've taken account and considered carefully the issues raised in the consultation and explored the impacts on different protected characteristics as well as documenting the justifications or considerations we've made against this in the equalities impact assessment. We've listened to the feedback we've had and are suggesting mitigations and further discussions in some locations as a result based on these. That's the end of my main presentation. I do have a further few slides um, just to illustrate some examples. And also I have maps available of all the locations to aid your debate in a second, should you want to look at what sites are proposed um, A, B and C. So this first one is just a, a bike hub up north. Uh, and this is an example of a place where they have incorporated public toilets and a bike hire hub uh, into a previous public toilet site. Uh, and this is the sort of suggestion that came forwards uh, for Harbour Road under the expressions of interest in the consultation and would provide a great link into the wetlands and the stop line way in the future. The following slide just got a few pictorial examples <clears throat> of the sort of design standards that we set out in the guiding principles. So modern loos, uh, easy to maintain, more efficient, um, safe, anti-vandal, easy to clean, reducing cleaning time and improving efficiency, and all with accessible standards built in so that it's easier for those with disabilities to use. Um, We've also got the opportunity in some spaces to design the block to fit the area. So bottom right is actually an example from Japan in a park where they've tried to make the loo blend in with the parkland. And the bottom left picture shows an example of an adult changing place. So under the review, we set out that we want to deliver at least two of these. Um, and, and these are large interior spaces for, for people who have um, disability needs. And there was strong feedback in the equalities consultation response, suggesting that we, we really ought to um, keep up um, with progression here and, and provide some of these spaces in East Devon. This is the list of the proposed categories. I, I won't dwell on that now, but I can come back to it when we're debating it. Um, and as I say, I've got the proximity maps uh, of the suggestions at each town area. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. I have questions, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Who's that? It's Mike Allen. Councillor Mike Allen. Sorry, I couldn't see you briefly then. Um, Sorry. I, I know that we've got lots of questions, and we're going to have an awful lot of questions. I would also like to hear from both the portfolio holders um, and wonder whether or not it would make sense to hear from them first and then go to the questions, because your questions may get answered via the portfolio holders. Um, so I think that may be the best way to go. I, I am aware, Councillor Allen, that you are first in the queue to ask questions when questions are opened, if that's OK. And Andrew's not going anywhere, bless him. So he will answer the questions in a moment. So if I may go to the two portfolio holders first so that we can get any questions, you know, they can they can put their points of view across then we can come back to questions. So Councillor Allen, you will be first in the line for questions, but firstly, thank you, Andrew, for a very in-depth report. I know it's been an awful lot of work and it has been a long time coming, as you've said. So thank you to you and your colleagues for all of that. If I could go to <laughs> Councillor Jack Rowland is first on, the, on my screen that I can see as the portfolio holder for finance. And then I'd like to go to Councillor Jeff Young as the portfolio holder for coast, country and environment. So if I could listen to Councillor Rowland first, please, with any comments that you have, and then we will go out to questions, if that's OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. That's very kind of you. Um, I think it would be remiss of me <laughs> as, as the portfolio holder for finance not to stress the current situation with the council budget, both for this year and coming next March, and the projected situation for the financial year 2022-23. And I urge members of Overview Committee to take this into account when considering this subject. At the moment, the projected shortfall for this year end is £439,000. And to balance the books, that amount, if it's accurate, will have to be taken from the general fund reserve 
that would take this council very close to the three million pound minimum required to be kept in that reserve. As a result, that end of year picture leaves little room for manoeuvre as that reserve cannot be continually used to balance the books. It is simply unsustainable <coughs> in the longer term. Hence the reason for this public toilet review that has actually been kicked down the road too many times in the past. Looking at the estimated picture for 2022-23, there will be another shortfall by the end of that year. And the current estimate is £732,000 if no recommendations from the public toilet review are adopted. Even if all the recommendations are agreed that would still leave a gap of a range of 300 to 500,000 pounds to find, even taking into account the maximum precept increase that could be put in place without going to an expensive public rec referendum exercise. This has over the last decade been a lack of investment in all of East Devon's uh, owned assets, not just the public toilets. Really, a virtue has been made in not increasing council tax at all in past years. As a result, that's why we find ourselves in the situation that we are now, of bearing in mind the current restrictions imposed by central government on the level of increase that district councils can make without going into this referendum exercise. If you look at the amount of council taxes collected by East Devon District Council, out of every hundred pounds that is collected on average, the district, uh, the county council takes 72 pounds out of that hundred pounds and only seven pounds on average comes to East Devon District Council. And out of that, if you look at what the average payment per week turns out to be three pounds 50 per week to pay for the statutory requirements that we have to provide in terms of refuse and recycling collections, parks maintenance, and obviously at the moment, the public toilet expense. So thank you, Chair, for giving me the opportunity to uh, say a bit more about where we are with the uh, current finances. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowland. I think it was very important for all councillors, um, regardless of whether you're on overview committee or not, to be aware of exactly where we are financially. Um, Councillor Jeff Young, would you like to speak as the portfolio holder for Coast Country and Environment? Thank you, Chair. Um, if you were a councillor uh, during the <coughs> debates regarding recycling and waste, and could we uh, go for three weeks uh, uh, with a black bin, those meetings were very challenging, as you can remember. Um, well, public toilets is going to be uh, just as challenging. But like the recycling, our officers and staff have done their homework and we are ready to roll. The issue of public toilets provision could be considered as contentious or even more contentious. However, uh, we understand this could lead to a heavy debate, debate on why one toilet should be there and two here, etc. But the work officers have done in providing a well-balanced document on the next steps following our most successful public uh, consultation will, I hope, minimise members' concerns. I would like personally to thank Andrew Hancock and Jamie Butley um, for their hard work, uh, uh, stamina and perseverance and putting up with my incoherent uh, chasing emails. Uh, thank you and the rest of the officers and team. Uh, the facts are, I am actually embarrassed by the state of our public conveniences. How are, however, uh, we are not required to provide public toilets. It's discretionary and we don't get any help from central government at all. We have 27 loos, uh, which are mainly uh, uh, past their sell-by date and need substantial investment. Many of our loos are the loos of last resort. Uh, that is, I only go there if I have no other choice. Um, is that right? Uh, uh, there are, um, they're difficult to clean, long man hours uh, to clean and not COVID secure. Um, 
easy to vandalize, difficult to maintain. Uh, we are a vacation destination location, and it's vital we provide loos at our beaches and our large destinations where visitors are attracted to. We need to provide facilities for the less able, the elderly, and uh, uh, not, not only provide baby changing facilities, but disabled adult changing as, as at some locations. You try changing an adult on a wet concrete floor in one of our urinals, it's not a pleasant experience. I want to provide the best public loos ever and <coughs> then keep them rolling, uh, keep a rolling program of upkeeping and maintaining them uh, to the highest of standards. We have been kicking this important issue into touch for far too long. We must act now or else our environment health officers could possibly be closing one down fairly shortly. How many public access loos are available in East Devon that are not run by commercial companies? Uh, I did a tally the other day and it came up to 33. And that does not include railway stations, pubs, cafes and restaurants. Some parishes already run and maintain their public blues uh, through their precept. So those lucky residents pay towards their own village loos and contribute to other loos as well. Um, one town, Cranbrook, hasn't a public loo, um, although there is uh, uh, some in the pipeline. In some locations, the loos uh, were put there because it was a bus terminus, but the bus, buses don't actually stop there anymore. What's the solution? Uh, borrow. As a district council, we, we do have the ability to borrow at a very low rate uh, <coughs> to upgrade our loos. But unless we reduce our cleaning and maintenance costs substantially, uh, we will be back to square one in a couple of years with high running costs and no funds to run our rolling program of maintaining and upkeeping these new facilities. If we kept all 27, and uh, that would require substantially more than three million pounds, uh, and then we would have to uh, pay the money back on top of that. Uh, disabled adult changing. We would like to have one in each visitor town, and we have recently applied for government funding uh, for this, which would help finances on top of the extra borrowing. Um, close some, some are not uh, used much as the footfall has migrated away, or it was there because the buses terminated there, but not now. We have some in, uh, some in uh, close proximity uh, to others and none elsewhere. Uh, commercially, um, Exeter uh, has recently closed 15, leaving 11 uh, of their uh, toilets with the uh, commercial shopping centres providing two. So with some negotiating and thought at the planning stage, it does not mean that East Devon to provide um, extra loose. Uh, relocate, if we are knocking down and starting again, ask the question, is this uh, making the best use of a location? Uh, take Port Royal, for instance, at uh, Sidmouth, at the end of the Esplanade, it's got a view to die for, overlooking the Jurassic Coast, and we stick a public loo there. For goodness sake, uh, we can do far better than having a uh, loo at that location, and far better to locate a loo in a less dominant and more central location. Other uses, some locations would be better served with another use, or use as a cafe, cycle hub or maybe a public loo with a public loo incorporated we just need to be less conservative that's with a little c and think imaginatively uh, payment i'm really pleased that the majority of people responded uh, uh, to the consultation uh, and they considered that the payment would be acceptable this will probably be uh, by, be by contactless card at possibly 30 or 40p with cards available for non-smartphone and cardless people uh, to purchase from nearby retail establishments. Cash is costly to collect and invites vandalism. Prices can be quickly uh, changed and 
um, less door damaged. But don't imagine that 30p or 30, 40p per charge uh, will cover the cost. Probably the income would be around £200,000 in a full year. Let's be brave and take this opportunity. Let's grab the opportunity to invest, to re, uh, reinvent and to provide the best loos any local authority can offer, rather than apologise for our outdated public lavatories. Remember, we're, um, we were brave with recycling and waste. Going three weekly was a brave move, but we are now one of the best recycling districts in the country. So let's be brave and move with the times. Thank you. Okay, thank you to both Councillor Rowland and Councillor Young. Um, as the portfolio holders, I thought it was important for them both to speak at the beginning of this. Um, so I would like to go out first to invite non-committee members to raise their electronic hands if they wish to comment on the report. Now, I have made a note of the order that they were up in, and I am aware that Councillor Allen is first to speak. Councillor Allen, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johns. Uh, <clears throat> are these questions or uh, are we into debate now? Uh, no questions, please. Just questions. Que yeah, if you have any oh. questions, any <clears throat> questions or comments on the report itself. Yes, that's what I was hoping. Yeah. Um, the uh, question I have is, <clears throat> Andrew and uh, Jeff Young, <coughs> Councillor Young, have talked uh, a lot about the uh, upgrade costs. Uh, sorry, the upgrades, but they haven't put any uh, costings on that aspiration. Secondly, uh, the contribution from charging was estimated at 200,000. Could uh, that be explained, please? How was that calculated? And thirdly, question to the portfolio holder with one eye on uh, Simon Davey, is it possible to via uh, money from other uh, non-statutory areas as well as and beyond the transformation reserve? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Um, Andrew, would you like to take the first of those questions? Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, in terms of the upgrade costs, um, does Councillor Allen mean the, the capital sum to upgrade those toilets that are listed as category A? You you referred to upgrade costs. Yes. If you're if you're going to uh, pursue the objective of only keeping uh, category A mm -hmm. and upgrading and re if necessary replace, then what it will be the cost of both the capital and the ongoing investment required? <laughs> Understood. So the capital cost is 3.1 million, and that was set out in the May Cabinet report. Um, the background papers included a breakdown of, of the estimates of cost at each site, which varied depending on the, whether the site was suitable for refurbishment or needed rebuilding. Um, so that, that's where that comes from. The ongoing costs then, so the saving that's aligned to the potential categorization if it goes through, comes out of the current revenue cost for running public toilets. So it would be a reduction to the revenue cost of running the public toilet service by, for argument's sake, 204,000. Turning to the income on paid access. Uh, I'm so, so just for clarification, the ongoing cost is how much? So the, the service costs almost 900,000 in total. So depending on the options taken through the report, we have the ability to reduce that by 204,000 up to the 430 odd thousand. Okay, that's clear, thank you. Uh, and the income side, that is an estimate at this point. Um, that was in the Healthmatic paper that was attached as background paper in, in the May Cabinet report. It's based on a million visits a year, which is their estimate of our users um, from water consumption and materials, consumables, et cetera, based at 40p a visit. Uh, obviously, if you step that down to 30p, which was the most favored charge in the consultation, that comes out at 150k. 
uh, and if you step it up, it goes up incrementally. That was also based on the model as presented by Healthmatic, where they would enter into a partnership to operate the charging with us. And so they retain some of the income, but we could choose to just procure the, the charged access stores ourselves uh, and keep a greater proportion of the income. But we had, we had to use something as the basis for the estimate in the report. So the net benefit is 200,000 or the net benefit is uh, sorry the 200,000 is a gross benefit so the net benefit on the model in the healthmatic report is 200,000 at a million visitors with a 40p charge uh, excluding any healthmatic costs uh, that, that's included so there's the 200,000 pound capital installation cost which was outlined in the detail of the may report but then healthmatics other charges are included in their retained portion of that income but it's that's just one model upon which you could take it forwards yeah thank you councillor johns for letting me query that i'm still not clear as to whether that two hundred thousand is net net of all fees the the 200,000 is what we would retain. So it's, it's net of other costs, putting the capital cost aside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, you're happy with, well, possibly not happy with those answers, answers Councillor Allen, but are you satisfied well, with those answers? I, I haven't had the answer from Jeff Young and, and Simon Davey on wiring yet, but I'm happy. Uh, that uh, so, uh, that the officer is uh, given every attempt to clarify very confusing costs. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Young, you were named. Then would you like to come back at all? Uh, what, what was the question, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Allen? Uh, the question was: Is it possible to via from other commit uh, commitments? of non-statutory uh, services, as well as on top of the transformation reserve, if necessary. I don't understand the question, sorry. Can, can, I, can, can I help? Like all, that you might have a, a, a bit of a clue there. Would you like to assist? Yeah, I'm sure Simon David would correct me. Um, so thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Anne. I suppose it depends exactly which budget line you might be referring to that could be a possibility, but um, if you're talking about uh, costs which may be uh, in a discretionary budget, I suppose it depends exactly why that budget was set up and what the item might be for and whether there's any more public consultation that might be required. Um, if Simon Day wishes to add anything to that, in case there's anything more to add, I'll um, defer to him as well. But that's my understanding. Through the chair, if I can. Of course you can. Carry on. Yeah. So just adding to Councillor Rowland's reply, which I'm happy to agree with, in addition, just covering off the transformation fund or tra transformation reserve that Councillor Allen mentioned, mm -hmm. that's being proposed as a, a one-off to help with the transition period. So those uh, public conveniences whereby there is going to be an alternative use, it was to allow for their continued use to meet that cost for a short period while those negotiations um, came through and we could assign those public conveniences <clears throat> so it's not an ongoing solution it, and that's why it's the transformation reserve it's a one-off sum to be used as a temporary measure to aid those negotiations and keep the toilets going during that short period thank you simon okay councillor Allen, i think your answer your questions have been answered in full uh, not in full. There was a very political answer from Jack Rowlands, but they have been answered. Thank you. OK, so next I have on my list, Wendy, if you'd like to clarify. Obviously, we, we're going to people that are outside the committee to begin with for questions on the report given. OK, so I don't want a massive debate on why you need to keep your toilets in your area. It is on the report that's been given. So the next person I have on my list is Councillor Bruce de Sarum. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Yes, I, I feel that I, I should make a quick comment on behalf of the Littleham residents, because obviously a lot of the 
categories um, B and C that we've mentioned. But my question really focuses on 2.8 of the report, sorry, 2.18 of the report on, on page 25, which um, basically says the majority, however, wanted the toilets to remain open and funded by Stephen. This doesn't address our budget. Um, it is recommended um, and there will be further investigation made. Um, can, can I ask uh, what further investigation has been made um, because I'd like to touch on the case of Orkham Point, uh, because research suggests that I've discovered from R Raymond Martin, who is a managing director of the British Toilet Association, said that sometimes transferring the ownership of public toilets could keep them open, but sometimes with a lower level of service. You have a community group or a town parish that's trying to find something like between 2,000 and 5,000 a year to keep those toilets running. So they're having to do fun runs or whatever. In a lot of cases, they are successful, the toilet remains open, but they reduce the hours they're open and they have only limited the resources to get them cleaned. So what I want to find out is if we go down this road, it, it will will Orkham Point in particular um, get get a you know continue to be what it is because obviously I note that Orkham Point is in c c category B and I think there have been a lot of concerns uh, particularly by um, a fellow ward member uh, David Councillor David Poor who has written I think the Orkham Point needs to be kept open I, I didn't wish to as you said Chair be, be parochial about toilets but my point is how much further investigation has been made and do you think that the outcome is likely that these toilets in category B can be properly taken over or are we going to have to do some kind of rethinking to satisfy the public? Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor de Sarum. Andrew, would you like to answer the question? Yes, Chair, I, I shall try my best. Um, so I, I think Councillor de Sarum's quoting a recent Guardian article mm. where they were talking about the decline of British toilets. Um, uh, and we accept everything in that and, and in the taking the P report. And we've tried to be very upfront and open through this in that we're saying we don't feel East Devon can afford a continued level of provision as it has had. And so we're trying to find the least impactful way of providing something accepting that that imperative uh, and so Orkham Point toilets with the extra investigation means um, going out to market um, to invite formal bids on, on those alternative uses and in the mitigations I've talked about how we could control heads of terms um, lease conditions and the evaluation such that we are choosing uses that work for the community. Um, but yes, it is likely that a category B alternative use comes forward. There will be a different level of provision from a, a, a straight public toilet provided by East Devon. That said, you get the advantage of the alternative use. At Orkham Point, we've had a very credible expression of interest from a local Exmouth business who would like to um, repurpose it into a, a cafe and include publicly accessible toilets within that. Uh, and we believe that's viable. The <clears throat> further investigation that's required is then to go out to market um, to, to get a, a formal offer on that and see if there are any other expressions of interest. Thank you, Andrew. I'm assuming that answered your question, Councillor de Sarah. Indeed it did. Thank you very much, Chair. M most helpful. And hopefully we will get that the expression of interest. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. OK, next on my list that is not in the committee or on the committee, should I say, I have Councillor Ledger. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm going to try and not be parochial, but I need to ask a parochial question. It is about uh, yeah. the Harbour Road toilets in Seaton. So, Andrew, it's 6.4. It, it states in the report, obviously, the capital cost of 3.14 million. Um, and there's 14 sites there, including two additional sites. I know, obviously, currently the town council is funding for the toilets at Harbour Road to be cleaned. Will that, if what you're proposing is to shut down the, the Harbour Road toilets, will that reduce the capital costs or...? Is that to include on obviously the offline conversations that we've had regarding what we believe is <coughs> a, a, a slight special case really in the district? Um, can you just clarify that? And then secondly to that, um, can you just confirm whether, obviously I know that a lot of towns and parishes uh, through the consultation won't sign up and put their hands up in the air uh, and willingly throw money at public toilets that don't belong to them. So if they are due for disposals by the district, um, would the council be willing to set up SLAs with these towns and parishes to enable the cleaning to still be done by the district, but obviously funded through these towns and parishes? I think that would be a lot, um, well, 
it would be a lot more beneficial for for towns and parishes economies of scales uh, through the district would be yeah a lot easier so just those two questions please thank you am, am i okay to answer that chair yes of course thank you councillor ledger um so first of all, the town council paying towards current operation at Harbour Road is, is a function of the enhanced cleaning that we've got for COVID protection, um, which actually, as a point of interest, is due to come to an end shortly at the end of December. And we'll then need to take a view on case rates and whether we need to do something in addition there. The capital costs, um, are you referring to the list from the May report? Um, where we had estimated the, the rebuild and refurbishment costs? Yeah, so in the report, it's 6.4. It states that the the refurb costs are 3.1 million. Yes. And that includes the 14 sites plus two additional. And the two additional is one at Exmouth at the bus station and the second one's Harbour Road in Seaton. Yes. So at the time when we put together the capital list, um, there, there was less clarity on the categorisation. Obviously, that's been refined uh, based on, on the results that we've had. Um, so, yes, potentially the capital amount would reduce if those sites weren't confirmed as category A. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that, of course, will be a, a debate for, for Cabinet. Uh, in terms of the SLA, yes, absolutely, we can offer our services to other providers, town and parish councils or um, business and community groups. Harbour Road, I think, is a fantastic site for something additionally. And I, I know we disagree on, on whether that should be incorporated into a business or should have standalone toilets there. But for argument's sake, if there was a bike hub there that linked to the stop line way, uh, and it had two accessible toilets with, with exterior doors. If the business paid East Devon, we could enter into an SLA with them to, to clean and maintain those, just as we could with the Town and Parish Council. But I think what we're suggesting in this is that those sites that are Bs and Cs are outside of what we can afford now. Uh, and so those SLAs would need to cover the revenue cost and the capital cost of, of those sites. Yeah, if I may, can I just come back just quickly? I I think, yeah, we do disagree just on whether um, whether they should be run in-house or out, out house of a, a new provider. I think it's just the fact that I we've seen it happen at the hideaway in Seaton. I don't believe that it's, it's worked that well. It needs to, We need to have a solution that can run uh, at longer hours. And if that is the case that... Um, the district council is pushing to close these. We need to have a longer term solution for longer periods of the day um, because the toilets at the hideaway don't serve the public for, for long enough. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, I think, again, that's something that was going to have to go to the debate as opposed to a question. I appreciate what you're saying, but it is something that's got to go to the debate. Now, on my list of speakers, I do have two councillors that are also on overview. So I will be coming to them after I've gone to those that are outside of overview. OK, so there's about four that are on overview. I haven't forgotten you. I have made a note of you, but I will come back to you. OK, so the next person that I've got who isn't on overview, who is asking a question on the report. OK, is Councillor Twist. Thank you very much. I think my questions are more directed at the committee, although there are questions that I think will be partially covered off within this section, but I'd rather address the committee when we get to the debate stage, if I may. Yeah, that's fine. So if I can thank take you. off this, lovely. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next I have Councillor Parr. Again, this is a question for on the report. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm looking at um, the beginning of the report where it says link to the council plan and I cannot understand why there is no link to the better homes and communities for all. Um, this is very important for communities. Health and well-being is one of our priorities. Equalities agenda, how does that fit with this? It, it's could the officer please um, expand on that? Thank you. Andrew, over to you, please. Yes, um, my apologies. I think this is just an oversight on our part. Um, we were looking primarily at our 
portfolio area which generally sits within a greener East Devon and a resilient economy um, but I think Councillor Parr's right that there are impacts on communities here uh, and we have gone into detail on that in the equalities impact assessment. Okay thank you Andrew. Okay okay next on my is, is that okay for you Councillor Parr? Thank you. Uh, next on my list of the people that are going to ask a question on the report but are not on overview is Councillor Arnott, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Sorry I was late. I've, I've just been having a meeting with MP um, and I think to save time, I, I won't ask a question. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, you So I'm now going to come into overview because I can't see anybody else, unless Wendy can, I can't see anybody else that's, that's not on overview that wishes to ask a question on the report. OK, so this isn't going into a debate about why your toilets are more important than the next person's toilets. This is a question on the report. OK, right. So first on my list, I have Councillor Gazard. Thank you, Chair. And firstly, can I um, thank Andrew for the report and the input from um, the two portfolio holders? It was th that was interesting. Um, my question is on um, 2.4 of the report. Um, one is regarding the speed um, per hour and then the eight minute walk away. Does, does the report take into account, um, we talk about disabilities, but there is such a thing as hidden disabilities, which there, there are many. And I, I will just highlight a couple. There is colitis, people with visual impairments, stoma people that have catheter bags, prostate and Crohn's, people suffering from Crohn's disease, that's just a few of them. Has the report taken those sort of conditions into to account, please? Andrew, are you happy to answer that question? Yes, th thank you, Councillor Gazard. Um, yes, we have considered those in the Equalities Impact Assessment. Um, the linked reports in there talk about the impacts on, on those sorts of protected characteristics. Uh, and we, we, we haven't shied away from the fact that there is an impact on some of our protected characteristics. What we've tried to do with the proximity is accepting that if, if you accept, as we're setting out, that we can no longer afford everything as we have now, we've put the proximity principle in to safeguard uh, a level of access so that people can still get to a toilet. Uh, I accept, I think, the, the thrust of your question in that perhaps the eight and four minute walking distance is, is still too far for some of those people you've mentioned. Um, but we've done everything we can through the EIA to mitigate down that impact as far as, as we can, taking those imperatives in section three into account. Thank you, Andrew. Does that answer your question, Councillor Gazard? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. OK, the last person I have to ask a question on the report is Councillor Woodward, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, the question on the report is paragraph 217, and it's another question on mitigation. And we're referring to um, discount cards. I was wondering if there's going to be um, is there going to be an assessment of who can't afford to pay and who has medical needs? Is there going to be a cost? Well, I can imagine there should be a cost involved in that, in which case, is there an inroads into the income which we might have by administering discount cards? Thank you. I think that's to Andrew. Thank you, Councillor Woodward. Um, yes, is probably the short answer. Um, because the decision's not made yet, we've tried to present as much information in this report and the subsequent report as we can, but there is detail that needs to be filled in um, pending the decisions being made. So the consultation response and the equalities feedback has very strongly supported that we should have a discount card. Um, some of the examples or information given were that uh, disabled blue badge holders have already been assessed and so we could use that as the basis for a disability access card. We've talked as officers uh, within East Devon as to how we could do the means tested part for um, a poverty side and, and we've got that information through council tax already uh, and benefits so we, we could cover that side off. 
and also in talking to Danfo and Healthmatic, um, we know they have similar sorts of access cards or prepaid cards elsewhere. So it is possible. The detail of how we actually deliver that and the costs associated have, have not yet been worked up. That's great. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. OK, now we're going to move to the part where we are going to debate what's been said in the report, etc. OK, so, Andrew, thank you very much for all of your assistance. Please hang around in case there's any further questions that come up. Now, I appreciate how emotive this subject is. I appreciate how much everybody wants their own toilets to stay open. But if we could look at this as a view of the whole of East Devon and not just your particular area that you reside in. And I can say that quite comfortably because often you don't have an East Devon District Council run toilets. So I'm not just saying it, you know, because mine are more important than anybody else. OK, so on the list in front of me, I have Councillor Miller's hand went up first. Thank you. I would like to make four recommendations. I will make the recommendation, then I will speak about why I've made it. Number one, to resolve that more detailed water usage data for toilets that EDDC own are more regularly assessed so they can be broken down to show how popular toilets are at certain points of the day slash year. So that's the, my explanation for it. Water usage figures in the consultation were not presented in an accessible format and were quite vague. Um, more detailed data and surveys may in future help us decide what part of the day or year specific loos are most needed. This is my only criticism of what I think was a very thorough public consultation. I want to thank Andrew Hancock for writing a consultation which generated such, and his team, such a large number of respondents, perhaps even a record. Um, two, to offer town parish councils one final opportunity to retain cate category B and C toilets in cases where leases with community partner organisations cannot be struck within 12 months and prior to closure in other cases. So on this recommendation, town and parish councils can raise their preset without going out to referendum, which could, which for us at East Devon could cost up to 80,000 pounds just for the referendum, according to the S151 officer who spoke um, with councillors about this the other day. Public toilets are not complex things to run. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. It's, it's not true to suggest East Devon are dumping assets to avoid our responsibility. Public toilets have sadly never been this council's statutory responsibility in the first place, but we used to receive generous grants from central government to run, not anymore. We have statutory responsibilities such as homelessness, which are sadly increasing, and we have to prioritise that. Now, on a more positive note, as an Exmouth member, I find the partnership model with cafes and eco hubs to be exciting, with the ideas of loos being accessible for non customers. Um, these can be branded as community toilets. In the case of the mayor or Compoint Imperial Rec and Jarvis Close, I believe this, that there is significant business interest already there in Exmouth. So as an Exmouth member, I'm happy with what's being proposed. But should any of these wonderful ideas not come to pass, town and parish councils, in my view, must be given one final opportunity to inherit these assets until they're lost forever to run as public toilets. Number three. Um, sorry. Number three would be to write to all local businesses and make a powerful case for the businesses to offer the use of their toilets to non-paying customers who may have disabilities and illnesses, as Councillor Gazard mentioned earlier, that aren't all, always visible, given the fine, sorry, that, as, that will not be in the recommendation if they will go to um, Democrat services, given the findings of the local consultation, which shows the high extent of local need. Um, so on this recommendation, I'd like to refer to a constituent of mine, Cathy, who wrote to me, to share how her inflammatory bowel disease limits the day-to-day -day life of her and her daughter um, and she's given me permission to discuss it. I mean she told me obviously being out and about brings its own anxiety meaning that some sufferers rarely leave the house. An eight or eleven minute walk to the toilet was mentioned in the consultation but that is a long way for someone with toilet urgency or poor, poor mobility. The points such as that that Cathy has made have been highlighted by many many others um, in this consultation which as, as I said earlier, have generated a huge amount of local in interest. Um, so on four, my fourth and final is, is to establish a principle of charging for category A toilets, but consider carefully both the price of entry, the choice of private partners, and the option of using cash as, as well as card. Um, 
I read a, an article which was from uh, July 2021, um, a, a, an issue in Torbay, where um, their new, new public toilets, which cost 30p to use, had been vandalised, um, with many people propping the doors open with rocks to save having to pay. Um, but because the people were bypassing the payment, the automated system was not sending messages to say they were in need of cleaning. Um, Exmouth was praised in this article for offering such clean public toilets. Um, so Cabinet and Council, therefore, in my view, need to consider very carefully the private operator that we use and what we and what we and exactly what we charge. And I think Councillor Allen made a good point earlier about um, an assessment at Cabinet, which I'd like to see in terms of how much we're, we're thinking this will bring in. Um, and actually, if we had more accurate water usage figures, we, we might be able to have a better idea of that. Um, worthy of consideration is actually whether um, cash can be used. Um, and if that is the case, 30p is an awkward price and therefore 20p or 40p might be best. Um, I'll leave it there. Those are my four recommendations. And I hope I'll be able to find a seconder and um, add any other recommendations that, that come forward during the debate. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Miller. Um, if I can just check with Wendy a moment that she's actually managed to get any of those down. <laughs> yeah, can I can I just ask, has Councillor Miller got them in an email form? That yeah, yeah, I'm going to email them out now. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I was, that's what I was going to Wendy, ask. Well, just, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, OK. Um, Henry, do I need to get a second for those recommendations now or should we carry on with the debate first? Well, it's your choice. If you want to ask for a second now or you can carry on, it's up to you. OK, um, I do think that possibly some of those points maybe Councillor Young has got a view on. Is it appropriate to ask Councillor Young to make some points on those recommendations before I go to a seconder? Well, I mean, Chair, I'll say this. I, I, I get the impression that this is going to be a, a meeting where probably we're going to have lots of different recommendations. So it, yeah. in a sense, we're going to end up in descending into having lots of recommendations, amendments and, and possibilities there. So. Um, that's my concern. Having said that, Councillor Miller has got it on there. Perhaps what you might want to do is, if, if it comes to people putting forward recommendations, is you, you do come back to acknowledge that Councillor Miller's was there first. The risk yeah. of that, somebody else might second somebody else's motion without you having the opportunity to stop it. So um, there is a risk of that approach. So having said all that, it might be better just to ask for a second and see whether there is one. So at least it's on the table and we know where we are. OK, so what I'm going to do first, if everybody's amenable, is I'm going to ask if there's a second of Councillor Miller's recommendations. And then I think I'm going to ask Councillor Young if he's got any points that he would like to make on those recommendations in case he thinks that there needs to be an amendment at all. So do I have a second of Councillor Miller's recommendations? I'm happy to second Councillor uh, John. Thank you. Thank you. So that's Councillor Bonetta. OK, thank you. If I can now go to Councillor Young briefly, just to see whether or not he has any points that he would like to make on those recommendations. And then we'll go back to the list of, of people that have got their hands up, if that's OK. Councillor Young. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Chair, for allowing me to uh, speak again. Um, regarding um, other uses, um, it's um, it's quite um, welcoming uh, that a, a councillor is uh, uh, looking excited ab about public toilets. Um, so that, that's great. <laughs> um, water usage, yeah, I, I would agree. If we could have had a normal year, we could have sampled the uh, water usage in a normal year, but with half the loos being closed down and uh, half of being uh, uh, being overused, uh, it, that would have been uh, that would have been difficult. So we went for the last full year, uh, which seemed to make sense. Um, I'm hoping that there are, there will be better systems in place to counting the number of customers, um, if you can call them customers, um, in the future. And regarding um, card or cash, um, I'm told that, um, that most of the vandalism is because there is coins in the um, coin collection boxes and most, uh, most uh, uh, councils have gone away from uh, taking, uh, taking cash. Um, uh, and it, now a card or a smartphone um, or you can uh, pop down the road to uh, a news agent or uh, a, 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 a tourist information centre or something like that to uh, purchase a card. Uh, and we, we need to look at um, the, 
the, the sort of people that um, would be wanting to have um, free entry cards. Uh, so that, that that's now that's going uh, all the card systems and all of that is going to have to be uh, discussed uh, later on when, when we get uh, better figures. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Young. I hope that was helpful to everybody. Um, so next on my list, I have Councillor Allen. Thank you. You caught me by surprise, but it's very <laughs> kind of you. Thank you, uh, Chair. Right. First, first of all, um, we're looking at a situation which does need thorough review. And I think uh, Mr. Hancock's done a great job in trying to pilot this review. He's done a terrific amount of work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not the officers that make the decisions. It's the councillors who are liable to the general public for making decisions and maintaining the quality of town and, and, and uh, rural uh, services to their clients, to the residents. Um, what we've got are a number of proposed um, po uh, public toilet layouts in the original um, suggestions put to cabinet and um, some of them look remarkably identical to the toilets in Kings Road, Honiton that you're proposing to close down. <clears throat> and that brings me to a very serious concern which Councillor Miller has already discussed in terms of disability. Uh, a lot of people and a surprisingly large number of the population have prostate, Crohn's, or various other conditions. Uh, plus, there's a significant number of young children that simply can't hold it uh, for uh, a long walk uh, to the other side of the high street. So, on many counts, I'm very unhappy that one of the, well, the second largest town, and factually, there's 160. Uh, sorry, 116,740 people resident in Honiton, plus all of the tourism we get, suddenly find themselves with only one toilet, a public toilet. And that public toilet was not suitable during the COVID epidemic. Now that's very, very serious because COVID is not going to disappear. And there may be other problems in terms of infections. So I do reject the proposal that's been put forward for Honiton on multiple counts. But coming back to the wider view, the co costings, I know that Andrew's done a lot of assumptions in his costings, but all of the councillors who've spoken about the costings so far have alluded to the fact that they're not terribly happy with the basis on which they were calculated. So that plus the spurious equality assumptions that have been made, because I'm really not satisfied with the comments that have been made on the equality side of things. Children didn't even get mentioned in this debate yet. And I think it's very important that we do remember that young parents have real trouble. I mean, why should they have to take them into a restaurant or wherever and pay to actually sit down so that their kids can use the loo? I mean, there's a very serious range of questions there. In respect of the um, report that is currently before overview, we have a democratic deficit. There are very large numbers of people who are opposed to their particular town situation. Over 80% of the people in Honiton simply disagree with this council. And yet Jake Bonetta hasn't said anything yet about whether or not democracy is going to prevail in this situation, whether he is prepared to close down the only 
viable COVID uh, viable toilet in Honiton. And as regards we can no longer afford, which was a blind statement made by Stephen Hancock, we haven't been presented with loan options. We have been prepared to put um, uh, 40 million pounds worth of investment into Cranbrook, which will cost us, I believe, in the region of 850,000 pounds a year to service. Then we spend 700,000 pounds a year on consultancy, and I could carry on. I just think that it's spurious to say we can no longer afford these things. This council is choosing to deny a significant proportion of the population, both old and young, key facilities, healthy facilities, disabled facilities, and health and safety protection, which are previous administrations all maintained, not perfectly, <coughs> but absolutely for what was necessary. And we have far better options. We're gonna spend three million pounds on capital upgrades. We're spending another 250,000 pounds on contactless costs. When you add it all up, we're not gonna gain anything at the end of this. And we're also proposing that nothing happens because we're gonna use the transformation reserve to roll it over anyway. This is not the right way forward, and I reject the proposal put forward and ask and plead with the council to respond to the democratic wishes of Honiton in particular, and a lot of the other towns in general. It's time this report <coughs> was reviewed by some form of plebiscite, if you consist, persist, in proceeding with it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Firstly, I'd like to point out that Councillor Bonetta didn't get a chance to speak earlier because the, first, the questions were questions on the report, not questions on why your town should be keeping your own toilets. So I'm sure, he hasn't I'm had sure a chance to speak. I'm sure he can speak for himself, Vicky. I'm, I'm sure he can, but as Chair, I'm entitled to. Um, so Please, I'm Chair, may, may I, may I uh, uh, use can, my right Bonetta. Bonetta. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to, to quickly respond to that. Thank you. Thank <clears> you for, for, for bringing up the uh, topic of, um, of King Street Loos. Um, I do kind of um, find it quite weird that, that, that uh, Councillor Allen has alluded to the fact that I'm not necessarily caring about these toilets, considering they were my number one manifesto priority uh, to keep them open uh, when I stood for election in July. Uh, but also... Um, it, it seems quite relevant to me, actually. Uh, I've, I've, been writing, uh, I've been writing a detailed essay about public policy making at the moment, and it's come to light through my research that uh, over the last 10 years, um, the ruling party has actually reduced um, its, uh, it, its uh, capital grant funding to, to councils across the country by 77%. Um, so there actually is a lot of different factors at play here, national, local, and, uh, and of course, at town and parish levels as well. So I think there is definitely some nuance to be had in all of these situations. Like, I think everyone in this meeting here, I think uh, we, we've got to get the best result for um, our, our, our residents, for, for our district as a whole, but also for our wards. It is our job, obviously, to be councillors for our areas. Um, and I did uh, want to talk about uh, Honiton very briefly. Um, and if I may, I would like to sneak in a uh, recommendation, uh, if that is if that is allowed, uh, if chair, um, on on the topic of Honiton um, specifically. I hate to be parochial, but I do think that there actually is a bit of a special case here, and I'm happy to go into that. I think um, I will come. I'll come at it from a different angle um, from Councillor Allen. Um, obviously personal interest as a Honiton Town Councillor. Um, but uh, one of the main premises for putting, uh, putting the King Street Loos down um, in category C still uh, was the Town Council response saying that it could possibly 
be interested in taking taking on the toilets eventually. Um, now, obviously, as everyone in this room will know, there has been massive issues over the over the recent uh, past, and also sort of uh, still some some issues still live um, to do with legal and governance issues. Um, and considering the massive changes that have been happening at Honiton Town Council, um, I think it is massively unreasonable to force, um, well, what are essentially going to be massive precept changes uh, beyond what has already been discussed at the Town Council level, uh, especially um, as this would come into play in April 2023, which just so happens to be a month before an election, uh, which I know is very convenient. Um, for, for obviously East End District Council, meaning it doesn't have to affect their, their standing. But for Honiston Town Council, it really does affect us. Um, at the very least here, some sort of special, uh, special uh, eye has, been, has got to be given to the situation in Honiston, what has been happening over the last few years, and also the, the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, and I believe another year of grace needs to be given on top of the 12 months offered um, considering the situation faced in Honiton. I'm not asking for much. I do think that it would be unreasonable to ask for it to go to category A. I think that absolutely there are uh, fiscal responsibilities we do need to think about in the long term because of funding changes from national government, uh, whether that's fair or not. Therefore, I would like to table the following motion, which I believe I've already sent over to Henry. Um, and that is this. Acknowledge the historic well publicised and in part still live legal and governance issues within Holliston Town Council and the fact that they require extra time to make finances and resourcing available to taking over King Street public toilets, despite their early inclined desire, and to make a special case to keep these toilets open for a further two years rather than one, to allow time for them to make the necessary arrangements to inherit and manage the asset. I do have another recommendation. I will come back to it at a later point in the debate because it is less contentious. I can see Can, that. I, can I second that, Chair? And it be brought into the, all the other recommendations that have already been made, as I think we both have them, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. And, 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 and Councillor Bernard has said that he's already sent that across to Henry, so I'm assuming Henry and Wendy have it. Yeah, Henry? So to yeah, I do have it. So just to be clear, what Councillor Miller is, is advocating is that that is incorporated into the proposal he's put forward. OK. As for seconder, I'm happy to back that as well. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. OK. Uh, I'm just going to be going round and round, isn't it, with everybody advocating for their own public tool. It's lovely. Uh, Councillor Parr next, please. And then Councillor Rag. Thank you. <coughs> So are we allowed to be parochial? Is that what you're saying? I would prefer people not to be. I would prefer them to be looking at East Devon as a whole, but I understand that you all stand for your own areas, so. Right, well, firstly, um, thanks to Andrew for his presentation. And he cleverly spun one of his um, statistics. He said that a third of people agreed with all the categories, but actually that means that two thirds of people did not agree with the categories. And quite clearly the overall responses were that people are really concerned about losing any of the loos, that the uh, it's a basic human need. We cannot, um, as a civilized society, not have loos where people are being encouraged to visit. And whatever um, is said about the responses from Colleton, and it was implied that there was a campaign here. Well, I have to say that nobody I've asked knows anything about a campaign, um, but there were 100% um, responses saying, keep a loo provision in Colleton. This is a rural, a center of rural tourism and what, what has been said is that the tram carries 
90,000 passengers a year. Now, not all of them come to the town, but a large number do. And other people on the East End Way, walkers, cyclists, they, they end up in Collerton. And it is simply not acceptable. And they come into the town centre where our loos are really well located. They need facilities. This is a basic need. We have one disabled access um, unisex loo that's been kept open during the pandemic. It's a very adequate loo. Um, the other two are not so good. But I think where this one is very up to, it's a, it's a decent loo with good access. And I, I just think it is quite unacceptable to suggest that we shouldn't have a single public loo in, in Collerton. So I certainly not agree with the categorization of Collerton in C. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm now going to go over to Councillor Rag, please, if I may. Thank you, Chair. Um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned is the provider, uh, ultimate provider, which is Southwest Water. Now, um, I'm sure lots of you aren't aware that um, I got the reason I'm here tonight was through campaigning against Southwest Water back in the early 90s. Um, some of you might not even have been born by then. Um, but anyway, what Southwest, from working against Southwest Water, I worked with them for many years. They set up a special assistance fund panel and I was a member of that for 16 years. And they actually presented me with an award for, for the you know contribution I'd made. But during that time, um, they brought in special assistants for people um, who had special needs, maybe families on low incomes with three or more children. And what provoked my thoughts tonight um, were the comments about changing facilities for both adults and very young children. And the people who are making the money out of all of this, making the profit, are the shareholders of that utility, uh, which was privatized under the Thatcher government. So I'm suggesting that perhaps Southwest Water might be approached. Um, they might be able to offer some support. If they can offer support um, to, to young families or people with special needs, um, then surely district councils <coughs> could be included, whether in a commercial category or in the general category. Um, so I'm suggesting that somebody approaches them. They are um, amenable to sponsorship. Um, I know that many years ago we had uh, help from Southwest Water. Um, here in the Exmouth Town Council, I'm not being parochial about this, um, but in providing the mayoral robes and regalia. So I think that it might be well worth approaching them. It would be a good PR exercise, which at the moment they need, um, which we know through the discharging of, you know, um, sewage into the, the rivers on the seas. Um, so has that been considered? Maybe I should have brought that up in questions. I did have my hand raised before the end of questions, but you moved into debate, no criticism there. Um, but I think it might be an avenue worth exploring. Um, they do realize that there's a need 
And so why not open it up to the wider public? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ag. Um, Andrew, is that something that has been considered? Just as a question thrown at you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we, we haven't um, gone to South West Water directly. We have looked at other forms of funding. What I can tell you is that we have had detailed discussions of South West Water in connection with Sidmouth Beach Management Plan, where we were asking them for a contribution <coughs> when we had a funding gap and their infrastructure was directly at risk and, and there was a flooding issue for Sidmouth and they declined to put any money in. That's not to say that they might not look at this differently, but we haven't approached them on this basis. Thank you. OK, I have a couple of other people who wish to speak. Um, so I'm going to go to those that haven't spoken already first, I think. Um, Councillor Arnott, you haven't spoken. Oh, and Councillor Arnott first, then Councillor Twist, because they haven't spoken yet already. And then I'll come back to the others. So Councillor Arnott first, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll be very brief. I'd just like to associate myself hmm. with the comments made by Councillor Parr. Um, we do need to retain the loo in uh, Collison, but I think I, I separate from her in as much as I can see the opportunity here. I think the report makes clear that uh, discussions have already been opened with the parish council. Uh, and I know that one parish councillor has already uh, very kindly sketched out some designs for what could happen at that site. And I actually think the Collerton potential model, if the parish council <coughs> and the parish council, uh, just interest declared there, are uh, excited by this, uh, is uh, where effectively the land, the freehold of the land on which the building sits is allocated to the parish council. We would be able to provide uh, a new, uh, completely new lavatory facility there because the one that's there at the moment is it, it, not really you know, anything particularly uh, exciting. Um, and indeed, we do have the problem that uh, it may be because of that, that our water usage is the third lowest in East Devon. But there is a win-win here for Collison where we retain the loo and we must because we do have both we have an elderly population, we have a tourism population, we have a walker population. We must, we must retain it, and we will. I'm certain that's the case. But there is also the opportunity to do something else with the existing building on the site to decommission it as a, as a loo, do something else in there, and there are some good ideas coming forward, and actually establish a revenue stream for the parish council itself. So I, I, I think nil desperandum, and I hope the parish, you know, hasn't been discussed there as a, as a full proposal yet. But it's been raised as a possibility. And I hope it may, you know, act as an encouragement example to others. And I, I think the report, which is splendid. Now, I have to pay tribute to Andrew on this because I'm aware of the monstrous amount of work he's put in. And indeed, if you'll forgive me, Chair, to my colleague, Councillor Jeff Young, who has, you know, just not not rested on this at all for months and months and months. Um, I think there's a way forward, probably on most of these. And finally, I would say, Chair, and, and I, perhaps as leader, I, I shouldn't really put my shoulder behind this, but I will. I do have a lot of sympathy with what Councillor Bonetta is saying about where Honiton Town Council is at the moment. I'd love to see it getting involved as I hope Collison will be getting involved but I do understand that it's probably not right now the moment for Honison to do that so a delay there perhaps may be sensible. Thank you Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to go to Councillor Twist as the only other member that hasn't spoken yet and then I'll come back to the members that have already spoken but obviously are going to speak. So Councillor Twist please. Yeah thank you very much. Um, it's very hard to avoid being parochial, as when all is said and done, we are the representatives of the people that elected us. But I will try and be as strategic as I can. I'll try and keep under the five minutes. It seems to be the guideline this evening. Um, but inevitably, there will be some issues in there which relate to questions I'm asked by residents in, in, in and about the town when I'm around. Let's not forget, this meeting tonight is about toilets reviews. It's not about what happens at a national level. It's not about what happens maybe if we have a good conversation with South West Water. It's not about what might happen at Honiton Town Council. We need to make these decisions ourselves. We are East Devon District Council. 
we must make those decisions. That's why we've been elected. So this evening, I'm speaking as ward member for St. Michael's in Honiton, and, and, and my comments are basically aimed at the, at the committee rather than the officers, because as we've heard, the report is comprehensive. I don't intend making uh, any co comments on the observation essay on the report. Some of it may well end or, or see me end up in hot water. Anyway, I don't disagree with Lace Walk being categorised as, as A, which is what's happening with a number of other loos in, 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 in the district as well. So I think probably my co comments will be as brief as possible with regard to um, King Street. So just to set the scene for our town, because we're a big town, Holland has a population today of 16,785 people and growing. Uh, that excludes the summer influx of visitors and is therefore a substantial settlement as well as a focal point for outlying areas due to its critical mass and infrastructure. That last phrase uh, of sentence came from an East Devon District Council report last week at a meeting I attended. Major development is taking place at Hayne Farm and Optimal Lane that will boost this number significantly. These new homes will bring a significant bump in council tax receipts to EDDC. We have direct access to the A30, A35, close proximity to Exeter, situated on the main London Waterloo to Exeter railway line. The town's high street is recovering from the pandemic, uh, extremely well, I might say, with a host of new businesses open recently, which makes it an attractive place to visit. But it requires facilities such as adequate toilet provision to support this economic activity. One of the key principles of, of, of the um, review report went to Cabinet on the 12th of May this year, just for your reference, uh, 2.2 section C said that East Devon will continue to maintain at least one public toilet for each town with a population over 5,000, uh, which is clearly significantly less than 16,785 uh, people as it is today. So do I assume that for every 5,000 people we have uh, a loo, or do I assume that even if the town was 200,000 people, just because it's over 5,000, we have one loo. So that's a little bit um, um, uh, 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 ambiguous. Um, taking the measure, though, of at least one toilet for uh, every 5,000 and over, and with King Street currently closed, the town is very clearly under provision, which cannot be allowed to continue as an appropriate amount of public accessible toilets is a necessity, it's far from being luxury items. The Cabinet report and the one before overview tonight, before you, uh, to actually make a decision on, quite rightly states that legally East Devon District Council must produce a balanced budget each year. And believe me, I'm acutely aware of the challenges of setting a balanced budget with my work in another place. Uh, but ultimately, prioritising the things that people tell them are important to them. Specifically, and this is what I found slightly puzzling um, with regard to King Street, we're talking about refurbs and upgrades and so on. King Street toilets um, being right open is absolutely open right now is a, is a key priority for residents in the town, particularly as we've heard 88% of uh, respondents disagreed with the, the, the proposed categorization. They're actually very modern unisex loos with separate disabled facilities in an excellent state of repair. How do I know that? Because I had a look at them this afternoon. For, for those reasons alone, they should be categorized as A, particularly when factored into the needs of the town, which are growing on a daily basis. Tonight's report says that in terms of supporting the medium term financial plan, cuts would need to be made to other services provided by EDDC. And it gives examples, parks, countryside, planning support, etc. But no detail whatsoever is provided on which services or by how much each might have to save to support toilets remaining open in order that people in East Devon can evaluate for themselves what really is a priority for them. With decisions and recommendations the committee makes tonight being based on the full facts and awareness of the bigger picture. Comment is made in the report um, that there were a few ideas of how to fund the financial gap. Surely this isn't why we, sorry, isn't this why we employ officers to put forward all the options, not simply rely on lay people to do this? Um, I've just got a couple more lines. If I can find my script, bear with me a second. It's, a, it's, it's not much waffle, Chair. You'll be absolutely thrilled to hear. Um, one example 
concerning re revenue towards the cost of keeping King Street open is where EDDC, as we've heard kind of this evening, is proposed, proposing spending in the town a non-ring fenced 60,000 quid to upgrade a play park, which isn't necessary for a, a variety of reasons due to good provision across the town. And when this alone would keep King Street toilets open for at least three to four years, based on the figures, if they're accurate within the report, uh, and also when the economic picture is likely to be significantly better as we emerge from the pandemic. It would also help to close that gap if we do a charging schedule. So we heard tonight, um, I think the figure was £200,000 or thereabouts. So that will close the funding gap significantly. Using the transformation fund for King Street uh, and others at first looks and appears helpful but in reality, it only kicks the tin down the road for 12 months to buy a little more time. We don't need to buy time. We need to make decisions now. This is, this is not a long term solution in any case and short term thinking. I hope you can support my suggestion in your debate that your, rec in your recommendations to reclassify King Street as an A category, Lou, and also to reopen them with immediate effect. It's, it's that important. And you can't rely on taking a flyer that Honiton Town Council might support or might not, because based on past decisions, they clearly weren't that keen. So I, I hope they are, but that's not the indications at the moment. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Thank you, Councillor Twist. Um, if I may go back to Andrew briefly, is there anything that Councillor Twist has said that you would like to come back on? As obviously he was commenting on your report. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I get that this is an emotive subject and, and everyone's entitled <clears> to their opinion. And we're not saying in the report that toilets are not important, nor that that toilet shouldn't necessarily be there. Just that the suggestion is East Devon can't provide all of these sites. And, and, and that's really the principle we brought it forwards on. Uh, in terms of the 60,000 for play, um, there is a planning requirement to refurbish that play because it came forward under Section 106. We accept that it's not the best use <coughs> play site and others would be preferable, but we simply don't have the option not to invest in that play site. Uh, and that has been explained um, to some of the ward councillors uh, and we've given some advice on, on why we need to do that. Uh, but I accept the, the principle, the premise of, of what Councillor Twist is saying with, with using other funding. Uh, and that, that will be a, a decision, won't it, for, for you as overview and for Cabinet in due course. Uh, on a point of order, Chair, may uh, I uh, make excuse, a comment? Excuse me, excuse me Councillor Allen. Which point of order is this? It's an information point of order. And uh, since uh, this 60,000 has been mentioned, uh, I look very carefully at the legalities of it. And we have no lien to spend as much as 60,000 on that site. It simply requires us to provide us 20 square meters surface and for children to play on it. So we could save a substantial amount of that 60,000. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I would imagine that the officers have looked into that all very thoroughly already and discussed it. Okay. Um, OK, I've got another councillor that hasn't yet spoken. I know that I've got councillors that are desperate to say something. Oh, that's a terrible phrase with what we're discussing, isn't it? But anyway, Councillor Ingham, you haven't said anything yet. Would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, for as long as this council's existed, there's been a, a public expectation for public toilet provision within the district. And we've always met that. Uh, if that were to change, make no mistake, we will be disappointing the people we serve. Um, over the last 20 years, uh, this has kept cropping up um, as a cost saving exercise. We don't have to, to do this. That's correct, we don't. But the public certainly want us to, and some members of the public, I suggest, need us to to make this provision. Um, I see the uh, extensive report continues to sanction this offload. Um, it's changed over the years, I note. Yes, some of this should be now to uh, a lower tier 
in local government. And I'd suggest those parish councils and town councils are in a weaker position to uh, sustain that provision instead of us. And you're creating um, a more difficult uh, task for them. Mm. And I suggest their ability to provide the appropriate quality of service uh, uh, is, is going to be far weaker than, than our ability to do so. So um, I say there's a moral question whether we should be trying to offload that responsibility to a lower tier of local government, in my opinion. Um, I'd also suggest um, the, the report is extensive and that the public have engaged with us. But it seems, in my opinion, from the recommendations that are coming forward, where we're considering lots of things except what the general public tell us to. Uh, one of those main um, senses of direction that they've given us is they want us to carry on providing the same facilities. Dislike it or dislike it, that's what they said. The second one is that they're prepared to make some contribution towards those facilities. I suggest one of the key options that we haven't considered is to say, is there any way that we can deliver that? We've considered um, a three million investment, which we don't have to do, but we've decided, sorry, the officers have decided this is something we should consider doing. That's not what the public asked for. The public asked for us to continue the same level of provision that we have now. And what I'd suggest, if we do this carefully and plan it meticulously, we can do both over a period of time so that we upgrade those facilities. Now, they have said they would contribute. Now, please don't misquote me on this, but um, we were told that uh, I think there was a million visits throughout the district in a given year, okay, based on the water supply uh, levels to, uh, as a, a, a total. And we're told that the cost is, and I think they're guessing, the cost is 900,000. So therefore, and I'm not sanctioning this at all or recommending it, but therefore, if we listen to the public and said, and they said, they, they want us to keep all the loose open and they're prepared to contribute, even if they pay for everything in the first year. If we charge them a one pound a visit, We'd be making £100,000 profit, which could go towards the upgrade as has been considered by our officers. Now, I'm not sanctioning that. But if we could do that, that tells me we can meet somewhere halfway and say, why isn't there something across the board that we consider for all public toilets? I think it's funny that we seem to think that people in um, urban areas have a greater need to visit the loo than people in rural areas. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people living in uh, rural areas <laughs> of, of East Devon, but when they're near a loo, they go and use it because they need to. Uh, and I, I think that that understanding of where you are when you go visiting East Devon, or if especially if you're a tourist in East Devon, you know, um, it's very useful to not have to panic and think ahead of where the public toilets are. And that's been an expectation for a hundred years or more, I would suggest to you. And where those public toilets, we've had a hundred years to work out where they should be. And that's where they are. So I'm loath for us to not listen to what the general public have told us in their responses. And I think we should think very carefully for, uh, before, um, before ignoring their requests. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Ingham. Okay, 
I would suggest as we've been going for two hours now, we have a five minute rest break. When we come back, I've got three councillors that aren't on overview committee that would like to speak. And in order, they will be Councillor Moulding, Councillor Faithful and Councillor Desarum. And then I have three members that are in overview that will be speaking. And that will be Councillor Young, Councillor Gazard and Councillor Miller. Chair, okay. I am on overview. Oh, I do apologise, Councillor Moulding. I don't know how I managed to get you in there. I do apologise. That's, why, that's first... why I haven't come in yet, because I was you... expecting you to ask all those outside of overview to speak first. And you've been inviting members of the overview committee to speak um, prior to all the non-members having their say. No, the only ones that have spoken are the ones that were coming back on questions that they were pulled into. Apart from that, they've had to wait their turn. OK, so I apologise. It will be Councillor Faithful first, then Councillor Desarum, and then it will be yourself, Councillor Moulding, as you haven't spoken yet. OK, so Henry and Wendy, is it OK if we have a five minute rest break for those members that require it? Yep, I'll put the slide up. Um, if I can ask members just to make sure they're muted because um, obviously we're still going to be live streaming on YouTube, so um, all comments will be heard. So just make sure you're all muted. So um, it, should we're coming back at five past? Yeah. Five past eight? Okay, yeah. lovely. Thank you. Thank you.
when you're ready, Chair. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, so all right, we're back in the room, as it were, uh, and I've got a list of people to speak in front of me. So I'm going with those that haven't spoken yet. Um, so I've got Councillor Faithful next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, as you know, Chairman, we don't have any toilets owned by East Devon District Council in Autry. We haven't had that for, I don't know how many years. I think it was about 2016, 2017. We used to have Pine Street car park toilets. And when Sainsbury's took over the car park, they wanted to increase the car parking <coughs> spaces. <coughs> so they had the agreement was made that they would provide the replacement public toilets as part of the supermarket complex um the ones up by the church the uh, flexton uh they were in part of the old library the town council had to take on the old toilet system and east Devon district council had the contract to do the cleaning so that's how we dealt with the maintenance. When we relocated the library to the NatWest Bank, we built a brand new toilet system uh, as part of the town council budget. And so the town council were responsible for those toilets. And that was, I don't know how many years ago, that was all done. On top of that, we have um, Ottery Church has their own toilets as well. So that's one of the reasons the the old library toilets were used the most was for major events because there was no that was the nearest public toilets was the library. So now the church has their own toilets. So listening to all of what everyone's saying, quite honestly, I think there's an awful lot of councillors making a lot of hoo ha fuss over something that <coughs> what we had to deal with years ago. And really, I think you know. There's no reason why parish councils can't take this on and take the contract if East Devon maintained a uh, contract to maintain the toilets, exactly what Ottery used to do. I'm not quite sure what we do now. I probably need to check with that. But, you know, this, I wasn't going to say anything because, because of the very reason that Ottery hasn't got any toilets anyway. But I think you really need to wake up and, you know, look at yourselves at your own parish councils and town councils and deal with your own problems because you're the one councils the parish councils and the town councils have the bud, uh, budget <laughs> where you have no limit to how much you can increase your precinct each year it's the one council that can do that so you're the ones the parish councils and town councils are the ones who can afford to deal with this financially Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Faithful. I think you made some very valid points there. Thank you. Okie dokes. So I know Councillor Moulding hasn't spoken yet, but as he pointed out to me earlier, quite rightly, he is actually on overview. So I'm going to go to Councillor Desarum first, who isn't on overview, and then I'm going to come in. So after Councillor Desarum, it's yourself, Councillor Moulding, okay? Councillor Desarum. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, I recognise that we must take the public with us on this journey. And I'd like to ask or recommend to the committee that before we make a final decision on the officer's recommendations, that further investigations are made. If we look at the report on page 23, where over 50% of the respondents disagreed with the recommendations, and that is 0.14 Sid Sidmouth Marketplace, 17 Exmouth Orkham Point, 19 Seaton Harbour Road, and 25 Exmouth Bus Station. So I would like committee to give consideration to further investigation, because if we look at the original cabinet report, which came to us back in May, I believe if we look at para 6.4, we've not yet been given a full picture of, of what the situation is. And apologies to the officers if I have misinterpreted it, but it goes on to talk about at 6.4, the additional sites, bus station Exmouth, category C, but linked to the motorhome project. Now, I raised the motorhome project at the budgeting setting, as Councillor Rowland will recall that I, I raised this uh, for the motorhome 
motorhomes for raising money for the council in, in terms of this project. And I think that if it's mentioned as it was in the bus station, I really think, and it then also goes on to talk about Harbour Road. So I think I'd like to ask the members of Overview if they could possibly consider uh, deferring this for further decision to be made on those particular items where the public was over 50%, because I think that way we would have done our due diligence on the matter, because it's very important for the public to understand that we didn't just go ahead and rush in to deal with it without further consideration. So that's my proposal to the committee, that we, we look at those four areas uh, within East Devon, as you quite re rightly pointed out, Chair, um, and I hope that that finds favour with a member of the committee to go forward as a, as a recommendation. Not to stop the project, but merely to pause it so that proper data can come forward, because if the motorhome project came forward, then that may be a different situation for the Exmouth bus station to look at. So thank you very much for that, Chair, and I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Councillor DeSan. Councillor Mouldy, if you just wait just one moment, I've just realised that Councillor Young has also got his hand up and is also not on overview. So this is where it gets confusing because everybody's on so many different things. I'm kind of like, oh. So if you don't mind, I'll let Councillor Young speak first as he's not on overview. And then when I come into overview, Councillor Mouldy, you'll be the very first person I call. Excellent. Councillor Young. Uh, thank you. I just want to come back as <coughs> uh, speaking as a ward councillor rather than portfolio holder. Um, my ward is Limston and Woodbury. Um, they both have got loos. They both pay for them themselves. And um, uh, Woodbury is looking at um, uh, knocking them down and making better use of them and uh, still providing a, a toilet there. Uh, then you've got places like Cranbrook, haven't got toilets. Ossery, haven't got uh, toilets. So it, I hate to use this word, but this now leveling up. Um, we've got various towns and villages that don't uh, uh, don't have any loos, uh, and uh, some of those uh, villages. Um, now there's another six villages that um, pay uh, for their own loos. So th those residents are paying once. In for their parish, and also, also paying to, uh, paying through their rates for loos in other places. Uh, and I, I accept that uh, town centres uh, no town centres need loos, um, and uh, no, beaches certainly need loos. Uh, but you need to bear in mind that some towns are uh, contributing quite heavily um, for this purpose and um, and they pay again uh, with their precept. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Young. Okay, Councillor Moulding, go for it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. And uh, I'm going to say a few words and then, as I understand, um, Councillor Miller has put forward a recommendation I shall be uh, putting forward an amendment <laughs> to that recommendation. Um, so just to start with, I'd like to thank Andrew Hancock for his very thorough report. Um, but um, in, in no fault of, of Andrew's, but it's, the cost assessments can be rather confusing. And um, I don't know that we really know what each toilet costs. And it's very difficult to assess that and it's been done by water usage and so on. Uh, but as far as I am aware, Chair, um, I don't know that the public has ever told us that we should close our toilets. And in fact, I think Andrew Hancock in his report said in one of his um, uh, uh, favourite expressions was, why should we want to not find a way to use our toilets as we do now? And that's what the public seem to want. We are all aware that you don't get something for nothing. And that's pretty obvious. And 56% um, uh, agreed that they would pay to us access toilets. Therefore, I would wish to suggest that a charge should be made for using our toilets. We always used to call it spending a penny. In 1973, 
a penny which you was used to pay for using toilets, or I used to in 1973, would now be worth a pound. So that would be a pound for using your toilets if you were spending a penny as you were in 1973. Now, I'm not suggesting that a charge of a pound would be appropriate, but I would recommend to Cabinet, and this is my recommendation, that a charge for the use of our toilets should be made and calculated in such a way as to cover the cost of retaining and upgrading our toilets. And that's like my amendment. That. I'd like to send that. Thank you. Uh, and, and just to, to uh, complete what I am saying, if, for instance, a, um, a million users uh, use our toilets and they all paid 20 pence each, not a huge amount to pay, that would bring in £200,000 worth of revenue. So uh, it could be more, it could be whatever uh, the cabinet decide. But that's my amendment, and I'll repeat that, um, Chair, that I would recommend that uh, a charge for the use of our toilets should be made and calculated in such a way as to cover the cost of retaining and upgrading our toilets. Thank you very much. Can I just clarify, Councillor Moulding, is that an amendment to Councillor Miller's original recommendation? Well, there was yeah. there was one. That's that's the only recommendation we've had up to now. So mine is either a, a further recommendation or a, a different recommendation. But the usual way of doing things is that following a recommendation, there is then an amendment. And mine is an amendment. No, that's fine. But I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. yeah, please do carry on. So I, I think what Councillor Moulding is advocating is that recommendation four, as Councillor Miller read out, is, is effectively revised so that instead of saying and considers carefully both the price of entry, it will then read something along the lines of the charge for the use of our toilets such should um, uh, uh, charge be made and calculated in such a way. So if, if, if you will give me a minute, if I rephrase number four just to accommodate the amendment and see whether Councillor Moulding and, and, and Councillor Ingham are happy with that, uh, but the remainder of Councillor Miller uh, proposal will, will sit as as was. So when we get to voting on the amendment, obviously I'll read it out in full for you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okie dokes. So I now have, she says, looking at the hands in front of her, I believe Councillor Gazard, Councillor Miller and Councillor Woodward and then the debate is going to be over and we will go to recommendations. OK, so Councillor Gazard, please. Thank you, Chair. And <clears throat> um, you would expect me to um, back for my hometown of Exmouth. Um, we are the largest town in East Devon um, and we do have, I think, the most toilets in Exmouth. And, and rightly so, because um, all our toilets are used. Um, I, I do question how the costings, you know, the water uses was done. Um, and I, I think it needs to be redone now that the toilets are being used. But I'd, I'd just like to give a little bit of background. I think over the last 15 years in Exmouth, we've already lost four toilets due to one reason and another. Um, that is uh, down, down the Grove on the seafront and Litlam and Mona Island that were, were all closed, I think, maybe over the last 15 years. But trying to be positive, and, and we've heard tonight from Andrew and, and other people that there may be some interest from businesses that would be prepared to take these some of these toilets on, which, which I welcome, I must say, I do welcome that. But what I do question, Chair, is that um, we had the same offer when we had a brand new hotel on Exmouth Seafront, where some people were remembered that we had first class toilets on that piece of land. And the agreement was that the hotel would provide public toilets for people to use. On the day of opening, that was reneged on. So if, if businesses are gonna take on um, some of these toilets, is it gonna be, and, and it's probably a question to Andrew, Will it be quite clear in the, the contract that they have that these toilets will be open 
to the general public, not to not just to the people that go in and use the cafe or whatever it's going to be. And will there be clear signage put on these um, cafes or other businesses, what they're going to be, that um, general public, if they're walking by, can go and use it. But I, I really welcome the news that there is there are some people that are interested in taking on these facilities. Um, but I'd just like to have that for clarification because of what's happened in the past. Thank you. Andrew, is that something you th feel you need to come back at at this precise moment? If you want me to, Chair, I can quickly. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so just to cover that off, Councillor Gazard, um, what we're suggesting is that when we market these, we would market them on a leasehold basis initially uh, and constrain those mitigations from the report into the lease conditions. Um, <coughs> So, so that we would be talking about better wayfinding signage, um, access to non-customers, definitely. But there would be a limitation to what we could control, for example, opening hours. And it is based on interested bids coming back. Uh, if no bids, no bids of interest came back um, with those leasehold obligations in, um, then we would have to look again. And I think Councillor Miller touched on that earlier. But if if they didn't uphold those leasehold conditions that we put in there, then we could forfeit the lease or they would forfeit the lease, I should say. Could I just come back, please, Chair? You may, yes. Uh, thank you for that, Andrew. Uh, what, I, what I did mean to say, I just looked at my piece of paper I wrote on, is that I, I do think that the, the bus station has to be a Category A, not a Category C. Um, because um, it is so widely used day and night. Um, so I, I, I would like to see that recategorized, please. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gazard. Okay, I now have Councillor Miller and Councillor Woodward, the last two speakers. Councillor Miller, please. Thank you, Chair. I firstly wanted to say how much I agree with Councillor Faithful. I think he made the best speech of this evening so far on the fact town and parish councils are actually more empowered than this council to continue to deliver these services for all of the reasons that he stated. It's also more democratic because Cranbrook and Ossery, for example, don't have loos. So the taxpayers there are paying for loos in other areas their residents don't use. On Councillor de Sarum's suggestion, in my view, we cannot, we cannot defer this. We have to focus on our statutory mm. responsibilities that are increasing. Now, the term parochialism, uh, parochial, has been used a lot tonight, and the English dictionary the definition of it is having a limited outlook or narrow scope. Councillor Bonetta, in my view, is not parochial in the slightest, because he's very fairly balancing the needs of his area against the wider needs of the district. That's why his recommendation was so reasonable, and I believe credible, and I brought it into, to, to, I seconded it, and brought it into my list of recommendations. Um, under this recommendation, the Honiton toilets would be reopened with immediate effect, I, I believe, for two years, whilst future arrangements can be made. By contrast, Councillor Twist's comments were, were parochial in the dictionary definition of the word and, and typically uninformed. Councillor Allen mentioned that the previous administration were not perfect at maintaining public toilets. That's an understatement. The former Conservative administration let the loose become dilapidated whilst never, ever raising council tax. His party nationally and locally have created this unacceptable situation. Therefore, Councillor Twist's comments about this not being connected with, na with the national picture are frankly laughable. And it would be funnier if it wasn't so terrifying that he's the cabinet member for finance. And I believe he knows this situation full well, which brings me on to a final recommendation that um, I think is very important. And Councillor Burnett will be supporting me on this. We need to write to the Secretary of State for housing, communities and local government to request that he lobbies the Treasury for a fund be created to help councils further invest in public toilet provision and to make toilets a mandatory rather than discretionary yeah. service, given their positive role in, in ensuring people with health issues can live their lives to the full to their full potential. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Add, yeah, I'm happy to add to that. That add that sort of uh, things I'm seconding. Thank you. Okay. Did you get that, Henry? Uh, I've already got that one. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Okay, we have one more speaker 
and that's Councillor Woodward, and then we will be going to the votes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Woodward. Thank you, Chair. Just very briefly, um, just a very good report, I thought, as well, balanced, speaking as a district councillor. Um, I don't have any toilets in my ward, um, although I have some adjacent to me. But um, I think we need to make a big effort as councillors on sections B and C, categories B and C. I think there's some exciting possibilities there, um, particularly now at the Duck Pond um, in Exmouth. And we can have actually better facilities where they're combined with community cafes and hubs and other operations like that. So I think there's um, a lot to be gained from this report and the proposals. Um, and I think we are taking into account all the residents as a whole um, by taking this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Woodward. Right, okay, so we're probably aware of the fact that Councillor Miller has put forward four recommendations, Henry, was it at the last count? Uh, six. Six, and I thought it was more than that. Okay, so I think we probably, Henry, how do you think is the best yeah. way to do this? We can put on the meeting or all together or? No, can, I, can I just clarify with Councillor Moulding that the amendment that he would be proposing sits with the with the wording that I've, I've come up with. So um, I'm obviously we'll come back to the individual recommendations a bit, but this was recommendation four, which was establishing the principle of charging for category A toilets and considers carefully both the price of entry, uh, and the choice of private partners and the option for using cash. So that was as written. Um, uh, with Councillor Moulding's amendment, I would suggest it reads, establishes the principle of charging for category A toilets such charges to be made and calculated so as to cover the costs of their refurbishment and retention, together with careful consideration of the choice of private partners and the options of using cash. Is Councillor Moulding happy with that as the amendment to, to the original proposal? Yes, I'm happy with that. Thank you. So, uh, Chair... You need to check with my seconder. Yes, Councillor Ringham, are you happy with that? OK. I think I'm happy to incorporate it. Henry, because oh, isn't well, it very, it's very similar to what we've already stated. Councillor Bonetta, do you what, what do you think? Yeah, nodding. I, I, it's pretty much exactly the same. So I just don't but, feel. But but I, yeah. but I wouldn't be including the section about lobbying government, etc. All right. Well, well, we've got a slight problem then, Councillor Moulding, because your motion, uh, your amendment, if that's the only element of the of the amendment. So if that's the only element you're proposing, it's going to negate the rest of the motion. So I think your amendment's going to have to be incorporated into four. But I think if there's going to be a disparity on, on voting for uh, all or nothing, Councillor and uh, Chair, I think you're going to have to take them individually. OK, that's fine. If, exactly. if everyone's happy with that, yeah. we'll take them individually. Yeah. So uh, obviously, Henry, we've got the recommendations that originally came in, but they are now superseded by the recommendations that were done this evening. Uh, yes, I th the, only, the only question I've got, I think, if I may, is um, whether or not there needs to be a recommendation from the overview committee to cap to the cabinet in relation to the use of the transformation fund. I mean, it's not it's not necessary for overview to express the view on it, uh, but that was the probably the one recommendation that remains outstanding, I think. So I, yeah, I guess it's three, wasn't the, it? Yeah, yeah it, but otherwise cabinet will effectively have to consider that anyway. Okay, yeah, because I mean, as you, as you say, Cabinet are going to have to consider that either way, aren't they? Whether we were, yeah. So I think if Cabinet, if Cabinet, if Councillor Overview are happy, I'm getting so confused. If Overview are happy, we will go for the individual recommendations. If Henry's happy to read those out for us for clarification, because I don't want somebody at a later date to turn around and say that's not what I voted for. Are you happy with that, Henry? Certainly, Chair. Uh, sorry, and I, I hope I won't keep doing this. The other aspect right. is just, yeah, I mean, I. Uh, there is some um, conflict in, in them in the sense one talked about resolving uh, uh, and I, I had thought the, uh, that the intention would be for all of these to be recommendations to cabinet. Yeah, yeah, they are all, yeah. Okay, uh, so I think in that case, if you, if you can just give me a moment as I'm going through them, but number one then will be request that more detailed water usage data for toilets EDDC own and the toilets are more regularly assessed so they can be broken down to show how, people, how popular toilets are at certain points of the day or year. Okay, so if I can ask overview members to put a green tick for yes, if they agree for this that proposal to go forward to Cabinet, and a red cross for no, thank you. 
And if Wendy's happy to count those. Yep. So, are you abstaining uh, for, or are you asking a question? Abstaining. I'm asking a question. This is going forward from now on when they're when we have the new system. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah, wanted to check we're not going backwards. No, right. we're not, we're not pausing. Okay, Chair. So I have nine votes in support. Um, that's unanimous. So that is carried. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. If you're happy uh, to read out the second one, then Henry, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm just tweaking it slightly for uh, how it's going to flow through. Um, request that town and parish councils are offered one final opportunity to retain category B and C toilets if leases with community partner organisations cannot be struck within 12 months. Can vote then, please. Uh, Green. Sorry. sorry, sorry, Henry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, for those watching online, the vote is currently underway. Um, so, Chair, I have eight votes in support, <coughs> one vote against. So that is carried. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, third. Chair is request that the council write to all local businesses and make a powerful case for them to offer the use of their toilets to non-paying customers who may have disabilities and illnesses that aren't always visible, given the findings of the local consultation, which shows the high extent of local need. Thank you. So that's green ticks for yes, um, red crosses for no, and the vote is currently underway. At the moment, I have eight votes in support with none against and no abstentions. Happy to read four, Chair. Yes, please, thank you. The number four was establishes the principle of charging for category A toilets, such charges to be made and calculated so as to cover the cost of their refurbishment and retention, together with careful consideration of the choice of private partners and the option of using cash. Again, the vote is currently underway. Okay, Chair, I have eight votes in support, none against and no abstentions. Thank you. Five then, Chair, if you're happy, is uh, acknowledge yep. the historic, well-published and in part still live legal and governance issues within Hornton Town Council and the fact that they require extra time to make financing to make finances and resourcing available for taking over King Street public toilets despite their early inclined desire and to agree to make a special case to keep these toilets open for a further two years rather than one to allow time for them to make the necessary arrangements to inherit and manage the asset. Thank you Henry. The vote is currently underway. Chair, again, I have eight votes in support with none against and no abstentions. And so, Chair, the final one is that Council writes to the Secretary of State for Housing Communities and Local Government to request that he lobbies the Treasury for a fund to be created to help councils further invest in public toilet provision and to make toilets a mandatory rather than discretionary service given their positive role in ensuring people with health issues can live their lives to their full potential. Thank you. The final vote is currently underway. So I have seven in support and one against and no abstentions. Two against, Wendy. Oh, apologies, yep. So it's seven in support, two against. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Wendy. And thank you, Henry. Okay. Um, okay. I can confirm that this report and its recommendations contained therein, well, it's not their recommendations, it's the recommendations that were done this evening overview, are recommended to Cabinet. And obviously this will then be discussed further at Cabinet. So if anybody's got any extra questions or queries, feel free to raise them at Cabinet. Uh, Councillor Ranger and Councillor Woodward, you both have your hands up. Can I ask you, Councillor Woodward? Well, 
do we not have to vote on the report in the recommendation? The recommendation in the report, rather. Uh, well, we did discuss that briefly earlier, didn't we, Hen, when we said that they would have to review that at Cabinet anyway. So it, to be honest, it wouldn't make any difference whether we recommended it or not. They, they will be reviewing it at Cabinet either way, won't they, Henry? Yeah, yeah. so the recommendation that's come forward is, is effectively over, well, not over, it supersedes the recommendation that's in the report. It was for overview to decide whether it wanted to, to seek to, in, to include recommendation about considering transformation. Uh, uh, I'll be honest, Chair, that if members now want to, to include that as a further recommendation, that was within your gift to agree. Is that what you would prefer to do, Councillor Woodward? Well, it's, it's, if it's going ahead anyway, then no, but um, I don't want to add extra time. It just seemed to me that there's a recommendation. I, we haven't um, said yes or no for that going forward. So. No, that's fine. Councillor Ranger, is, was that your question as well? The recommendation about King Street car park, my vote didn't show. Um, it said eight in favour, and, and I was clicking away on my. Ah, your your vote didn't show up on that one. Can we make a note of that, Wendy? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Can you just uh, remind me which recommendation number that was? Henry, was it recommendation five, King Street? Uh, King Street was five. Yes. Thank you. So it. So I can confirm it. Nine votes in support. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Councillor Gaza, do you have your hand up? Yes, Chair. It's, it's just for, for clarity. Is it possible that all these recommendations, uh, a copy of it can be sent to members of the overview uh, committee? Because I'm sure um, I, I didn't write them down, so I'd like to see them in, in writing, but um, if that's possible. Uh, I'll happily send them around. I mean, they will be in the minutes, of course. Yeah, but um, that won't be for a little while, will it? Yeah, I, I can send them. I'll, I'll send them. We'll, we'll, we'll circulate them tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. OK, so I'd just like to thank everybody. Um, it is a very, very long debate. We knew it would be. We knew it's a very emotive subject. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for A, being calm, B, being polite. So I do appreciate it. So... Uh, that brings our meeting to an end and I would like to thank everyone, including members of the public, for their attendance. Members can I remind you that until the Democratic Services team confirm that the live streaming recording has stopped, you can still be seen and heard and any comments may be recorded. Thank you, Vicky.